Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today I have a project for you that is a trash to treasure, and I feel like I have rescued it from the dump. This was in a box ready to go, most likely at the end of the day, into the big bin to be thrown away, and he was just too cute to be thrown away. This is a little, like a lazy Susan or a little turntable that you'd put on your table with some salt and pepper and all that, and or just use for decor, and I couldn't let it go. It was just so cute. Somebody hand-painted this little rooster on here, and they started to do something else on the side, and I wanted to save it and rescue it, so here we are. So I used a little solvent to take off that little bit of paint on the side, and I uh, sanded it a little bit. It had some like, oh, like coffee mug marks on the side, like almost like burn marks. So I tried to sand those down a little bit. And when I did, it took some of the sealer off from it. So I'm going in with my hemp oil from Fusion. It's just a little sample bottle, but uh, it works wonders. So I'm going to just put this all on and then wipe it back. And that's all I'm going to do to this project. This next one is a rolling pin that I got recently at, oh goodness, I don't even remember, maybe Goodwill, Salvation Army, who knows, one of those places. I thrifted it from somewhere <laughs> and it was peeling off. Somebody had put on these stickers and I'm sure it was lovely in its time, but it's not anymore. So I feel like I kind of rescued this one as well because it is just looking pretty bad. So I used my sandpaper and sanded off what I all the loose flakes that I could of the sticker stuff and then uh, just kept sanding it and I used my heat gun to heat it up and that worked really well too and then went over it with my sandpaper. I also used a like a razor blade and went over it with that. I would heat the sticker up and then go over with a razor blade and the sandpaper and it seemed to work really well. Once I had most of it off, I went out and used my sander and sanded this down and got all that var yellowy varnish off. And I sanded down the handles a little bit to give them some distress. So I'm taking a little bit of my homemade dark wax that I have. It's uh, antique wax watered down with a little bit of black paint mixed in to give it a dark color. And I'm just gonna wipe it all over these handles and just be careful not to get it in the middle. This is a kind of a restoration project, I feel like. Um, I think I saved it from just being ugly. <laughs> I don't mean to be mean, but that poor thing wasn't looking very good. But I think I brought it back and it actually could be used as a rolling pin now. So I put that on both sides of the handles and then I wiped it back. And then I'm gonna take my Fusion hemp oil and put that in the middle. That's food grade, I guess. It's You're able to use it with food. So uh, it can be actually used for a rolling pin and it can be, it would be safe. So that's why I did that. But what do you think? Do you think I should have done some decor with this or do you think I was right in just saving it uh, and bringing it back to its original-ish form. This next project is uh, gonna start with a little bird makeover. I got this probably at a Dollar General or a Dollar Tree a long time ago. I like to pick them up when I find them. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive. I think this one was a dollar, dollar twenty-five, and I like to keep them in my stash just for certain projects that I have. 
So I wanna use one today. So I'm gonna use this DIY paint. I think this is beadboard. Uh, it's hard for me to tell the color, but I think that's what it is. And I will put a link down in the description. This is from a sample pack that I got. Uh, I bought a couple sample packs because I wanted to try out their paint. And I really actually like it very much. Uh, so I I forget that I have it because it kind of gets pushed back in the back of my little uh, paint storage. So um, I dug it out and I grabbed this beadboard for this little bird. So I gave him two coats. It's a clay-based paint, so it dries very quickly. So I hit it with a heat gun for the first coat and then... Um, a second coat and then hit it with heat gun again and now like I said I'm just gonna take some black paint and do his feathers and his beak and his little eyes Once he was all dry, I went through with my Rust-Oleum clear spray paint and gave him a quick seal so that I could put on some antique wax. I want to uh, turn this little guy a little bit more brown color and make him look a little bit aged and antiqued. And this stuff works so well. This is just uh, Waverly antique wax right out of the bottle and I love how this works. Now I use my spray sealer in, be in between these, uh, the paint and the antique wax so that it will come off a little bit easier and not be so thick and dark. I want it just a light brown. So I just go over the whole bird and then I wipe it back and I think it came out so cute. <music> I thrifted this little chicken wire teapot quite a while back and I don't remember what I paid for it, but it couldn't have been too, too much. And I just love it. I was going to mount it on a board and decorate it, but I changed my mind and decided I was going to use this uh, cloth calendar. Have you seen these before? So they have the little uh, picture on the bottom and then your little calendar on the top. It comes with a little dowel so you can hang it. It's really beautiful, and it was from either last year or the year before, and I picked it up at a discount, like a dollar or two somewhere, and I just loved the picture on it. So, And I thought it was very summery. So I wanted to cut that down and put it on the back of my little teapot. I thought it would be a nice background for it. So I gave it a good ironing because it was pretty uh, wrinkled. I had used some tea bags and some coffee with water and some vanilla and all that and made like a a slurry of uh, a tea stain basically a key tea coffee stain and I wanted to make it look aged and old so that I could use it on some of my projects so I'm just laying down the teapot onto the fabric and I'm going over it with a marker so that I can cut it out the shape that I need it to be. Once I made sure it fit well, I went back and worked on the inside. So I took my little bird and added it to a small piece of wood that I had to just make it stand up a little bit more and the bottom of the basket was a little bit, it was weaved so there was some up, you know, pieces that were sticking up and some that weren't and he wasn't sitting very flat so I thought I'd put him on the little piece of wood to make him sit a little flatter and give him more area to stick to. So I used my E6000 and some hot glue to uh, glue him down to the bottom of the basket. Now for my first layer on this, I'm going to put some Spanish moss around the bottom of the basket, around the bird. And so I just pop some hot glue on there and then just put some of the Spanish moss around him. I also had a little piece of some garland that I had that looked kind of like grass and it was a little bit greener. So I wanted to 
it, it kind of looked like a little nest. So I wanted to put that around the base of the bird to make him look like he was sitting in a nest. So that really helped to have him sitting up a little bit further with that little piece of wood that I put him on. So he stuck up still from that little nest. There we go. That was just in my stash. I must have cut it off for something else. So just put it on. It didn't have to go all the way around because you're not going to see the back. And then I started adding flowers. Uh, I added, I had a bunch of the red and white ones just in my stash kicking around. They kept falling out of the little area that I had them in. So I decided I was going to use those in this. And I think it goes well with the background as well. It's very summery colors so I think this is a great piece of summer decor uh, you could leave it up all year round but um, I think it would look great we have Memorial Day coming up and the 4th of July and the colors bode well for both of those so it's a great summer piece I kept adding flowers until I was happy with what the inside looked like and then I cut up some greenery different heights and I'm just gonna pop those in here and there so that they kind of stick up from behind the flowers to make those pop. So I think this came out really cute. And I just kept adding stuff as I thought that it needed it. So then once I was done with that, I took my, my fabric that I cut out and I'm gonna start with the bottom and just put some hot glue on there and work it on slowly. I ripped off a piece of tea towel to make a little bow, added a little red button, and then decided I wanted to add some Spanish moss around the bow. And I got looking at it and I just felt like it needed something else. So I have some of this raffia and I don't use it a lot because it's a pain for my hands to get it ripped up, but I was able to do that today. And I just made a couple little bundles and I folded each bundle over and then glued it to the back of my bow to just give it a little bit of something else to look at. So then I glued it right in there and I think it looks really cute. thrifted this basket from Goodwill for four dollars. I like to leave the tags on because I forget. I've had this for a little while now and I really like the one side is bigger than the other and you could use this for a little vignette on a table with the back sticking up and you could put stuff all over it uh, or you could use it like I'm going to do today and I'm going to put flowers in it and make it for a uh, patriotic or summery little bouquet here that you can hang up on your door or on your wall or wherever you choose. So I went down in my stash. I got a big box of flowers off Marketplace for $10. I didn't realize how big it was. It's huge and it's all like uh, Hobby Lobby and Joann's flowers. They're really nice flowers. So I just went down and grabbed all different colors and all different kinds of flowers to, uh, to put this together. So then I cut them up and put them into little bundles of the red, blue, and white. And then I had some 
off off color hydrangeas kind of like an, an off white and I thought those would look nice in there as well they're good filler because they're nice big flowers so kind of no rhyme or reason I mean there was a little bit as you can see here I kind of just bounced from side to side and tried to do about the same thing on each side uh, adding my reds and my blues and then I would take a little bit of the white and put those in there and just building it and covering up that foam that I had in there which I wired in and then gave it a little bit of a glue to it as well just to give my flower something to stick to. I like these little white sprays because I thought it kind of looked festive and like little sparklers sticking up. So I just kept filling it in where I thought it needed it. And I also had a bunch of different greenery. So I used a, different, a couple of different colors of greenery. I have this deeper green and then a lighter green and just just filling it in and making it look nice. So to make it a little less uh, focused towards just a patriotic type of uh, bouquet, I thought that maybe adding a little bit of sunflowers would create a more summery look to it so you could leave it up all summer long. Hope you enjoyed my trash to treasure thrift flips and just creating something with stuff in your stash i think these came out really good and i'm so glad that i rescued the lazy susan and rolling pin and was able to make some memorial patriotic summer decor with a lot of the flowers that i had in my stash so if you like this video please like share and subscribe and have a great day.